Good morning! Welcome back to our lecture room at sa ating segment na Usapang Mana. With me, your host, Attorney Raymond Bato. So, dap- dahil malapit na po ang Halloween, no? At itong All Souls Day or All Souls Day natin, focus tayo about mana or succession. We will start after this very short intro. Stay tuned. All right. So, ito po yung scenario natin ngayon, no? And this is it, no? Ang issue dito ngayon is that merong father, may property, father, meron siyang anak na binigyan niya ng mana at ito po siya ang pinagbigyan ng mana ay mayroon siyang asawa. All right. Ang tanong ng ating subscriber or mga subscribers kasi ang dami pong nagtatanong pabalik-balik dito, no? And I have to answer them otherwise they will continue asking. So, dito po ang danong. Uh, attorney, ang property ba na minana ko, pwede pa pangimuasukan ng asawa ko? Yan, napakagandang question, no? And we'll try to answer that, no? Sa ating previous lectures, nadaanan na po natin itong issue na ito ng bahagya, no? Uh, so, balit nga, nag-request po kayo na i-discuss ko itong topic na ito clearly at detalyado sa inyo po ang video na ito. Alright, so let us proceed. So, ito yung property. Ang sabi ni John, yung nakatanggap ng property through donation or succession, exclusive property ko ito. Yung sabi naman asawa niya na si Jane, nope, nope, nope. Ano po ito? Conjugal property ko ito. Okay. So, which is which, no? Eh, pati yung magulang ni John na nag-donate sa kanya, eh, naguluhan din. Ano ba talaga ang rule dito? Uh, ito bang property na ito is uh, owned by both of them or isa lang po ang may-ari. Okay. Now, una, discuss muna natin si conjugal property. Ito po ang sabi nito sa definition, it refers to the property owned by the spouses jointly. So, ibig sabihin, pag may-ari, nilang dalawang mag-asawa. So, kung ibenta isang la o i-develop ito, both of them must agree, both of them must give their consent. Both of them must give their marital consent. Why? Because they are co-owners ng property. So, clear po tayo, you know? Co-owner po sila. Now, dito naman tayo sa exclusive property. Okay. Ang exclusive property, eh, na, remember natin na ito tawag noon na parapernal property at capital property. Parapernal kapag sa asawa na babae. Capital kapag sa asawa na laki. Both exclusive property nila yan. So, may term nila is para pernal sa babae yon, capital sa lalaki yon. But wala na po yung term na yan, no? Kasi ang um, under the family code, it is now called exclusive property whether owned by the spouse, husband or by the spouse wife, no? Ang term po niyan is exclusive property. Dito po, ang um, it refers to the property owned exclusively by one exclusively by one of the spouses, okay? Exclusive ownership. Ibig sabihin, Walang pake si kabilang asawa kung anong gawin niya sa property na natanggap niya through donation, through succession. He can sell it, he can mortgage it, he can develop it anything without the need ng marital consent ng kabilang spouse. Alright, so having said that, we are clear on this matter. And we are going to answer the most uh, numerous questions the, that we get in our Uh, video lectures. No? Ito pong paano po uh, or kailan nagiging exclusive ang property. Okay. Kailan po ba talaga, attorney? Uh, yung, kailan ito nagiging solo ng isang asawa? Well, pinakalam po natin yung basic no? na kapag ang property regime nila ay separation of property. Yun bang um, bago po sila kinasal is that nagawa sila ng prenuptial agreement prenup at nagpirma sila doon at pinasa nila sa LCR na sinasabing ang aming property regime is uh, separation of property. So therefore, pag mag-asawa sila, kanya-kanya silang pagmamayaari ng property. Pero hindi yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Ang focus natin is yung uh, nag-asawa na walang prenup at ano ang property na mag sa kanila. And under the family code, pag kinasal po tayo August 3, 1988, pataas, 
we are governed by the rule on absolute community of property under the family code. Meaning to say that what is yours is mine. Yan ang concept, no? Ibig sabihin, pagmamayari nila. So, kung merong property si husband dun sa pagkabinata or si wife sa pagkadalaga at nagpakasal sila, both of them own this property already. It becomes conjugal property. Alright? So, ang pag-uusapan natin is yung, yung property na natatanggap ng isang spouse during the marriage. Ibig sabihin, kasado sila, meron silang donation na tanggap sa parents or sa strangers or may minana sila sa kanilang mga magulang or sa ancestors nila or sa brothers and sisters for that matter through hereditary succession or testate succession. Ito po itiatawag nating gratitus transfer. Gratis, libre, walang bayad po ang pagtanggap ng property during the time of marriage. It is defined as a transfer properly, pro transfer of property really given such as a gift from a donor or a bequest from an estate or through hereditary succession. So, pag sinami natin pong gift from a donor, it means is it is a donation. So, alam naman din rule. Donation must be in writing, signed by the parties, and accepted by the the person receiving it and it must be in public document in order to become valid. Now, bequest from an estate or through hereditary succession is actually bequest from um, through testate succession. Ibig sabihin, meron pong last will and testament and testate succession through hereditary succession. So, take note lang po, no? Ito po ang tandaan natin. Before marriage, yan, to, before marriage po, Meron kang tinanggap na donasyon na ilipat mo title sa pangalan mo. Meron kang minana na ilipat mo sa pangalan mo. Tapos, nagpakasal ka. Pagpakasal po ninyo, yung property niyan, conjugal property niyan, under the system of absolute community of property. Klaro po yan. Ngayon, kung during the marriage, e eh may tinanggap ka na property, what is the significance or consequence of accepting during the marriage through donation, through succession, mana, it becomes now what we call exclusive property. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, before the marriage, may tatanggap kayo na mana and mana or donation. Tapos nag-asawa kayo, conjugal. Kaya nga sa title, single pa. Pero pagbenta niya is marriage siya. That's conjugal property. Kailangan po natin ng marital consent yan. Now, if during the marriage, nakatanggap po tayo property, exclusive property yan. So, walang pakialam si other spouse on that. Okay. So, for example, bigay tayo ng example, no? Uh, ito yung, yung papa ni John at ito si John wherein uh, may property yung papa niya, let's say, i-transfer kay John through um, donation or succession, no? So, dinonate habang buhay yung father or succession nun matay na siya. And may asawa si John. Of course, si Jane, happy siya. Because meron nga namang natanggap na property ang husband niya. No? Either donation or succession. But uh, the issue here is that uh, ano bang klaseng happiness yan na baka sabihin niya, oops, meron na tayong property. Meron na tayong conjugal property. No? Because it is actually the exclusive property of John. Hindi po ikaw kasali. Or do benefit ka. Asawa ka eh. Pwede ka makatulog dyan. Pwede ka batira dyan. Pwede ka mag, uh, you know, uh, do anything there. Because that is, kahit pa paano, partners kayo eh. However, if in case that John decides to sell it, mortgage it, or, or do anything on that property, wala po kayong pakialam. And there is no need for your marital consent. Okay. No, 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 no. There is no need for the marital consent. Kaya nga, pag nailagay po ang, ang ang pangalan sa title, ayan, ito yung title ha, uh, John Reyes, Filipino of Legal Age, married to Jane Cruz Reyes. Yan pong uh, Jane Cruz Reyes John is just a description that uh, John is married to Jane Cruz Reyes. It is a merely a description of marital status. Ibig sabihin, kasado lang siya kay Jane. Hindi ibig sabihin na si Jane ay eh, nagmamay-ari na rin sa lupa na yun. Wala po siyang uh, vested right as an owner of that property. 
description lang na married siya. So, ayun. Tawang tawa si John. Sorry. Wow, mali, Jane. Akin lang po yan. Alright. Now, ito po ang uh, additional question. Eh, when is a property considered conjugal property? Okay. Well, kapag po ang donation ay donation po sa mag-asawa. If the donation is made in favor of both spouses, the property belongs to the conjugal property. Alright. So, take note that kung idodonate pala sa kanilang dalawa mag-asawa, ang property, it now forms part of the conjugal property. But you have to understand that in the deed of donation, taruhin po ninyo, no? it should be specifically stated there that the donation is for the conjugal uh, property ng asawa or to form part of the conjugal property. Check ninyo yun. Kasi, uh, if silent po, nakalagay lang, let's say, uh, this donation is made to John, married to Jane Reyes, it is just a donation to Dan, John, and therefore, exclusive property po ni John. So, walang paki po si asawa doon. Alright? So, that is the rule. And, if it is a donation to both spouses, both spouses must accept it in writing also, and have it notarized by a notary public. Kailangan notarized donation. Alright? So, with that, kaya nga, nakita natin sa mga titles minsan, no? Um, ito, for example, the title would say now, Spouses John Reyes and Jane Cruz Reyes. Yan. So, this word spouses, it clearly indicates that this is conjugal property. Kaya, klaro po yan, no? So, um, nakakakita kay sa title na nakalagay spouses. Yan. Ibig sabihin, these form parts of the uh, conjugal property dahil denonate ito ng kanilang magulang or strangers to both of them which shall form part of the conjugal property. So, if John says, I want to develop this property, well, he must get the marital consent of the other spouse. Both of them must consent. Bakit? Dahil co-owner sila sa property. Okay? Klaro. Now, another question din. Ito ay eh, sabay-sabay na ito na i-discuss natin dahil tanong din ito ng ating isa sa mga subscribers. Eh, kailan po magkaroon ng stake or claim ang isang asawa sa exclusive property? Sabi niyo, sir, wala kaming stake or claim doon kahit kanya yon. Kailan ba kami pwedeng makialam o makapaghimasok man lang sa property na yan, no? Well, the only way, the only time that you could do that is that if the exclusive owner spouse dies ahead of the other spouse. Ibig sabihin, nauna na matay yung napagmanahan or nabigyan ng property during the marriage. Okay, I'll give you an example. So, let's say, see, let's go back to John, no? He has this property, right? And then, he dies ahead of Jane. Okay, Jane here now has a stake or claim or vested interest in that estate of the property of John. Depende, no? Kung siya lang ba mag or meron siyang kasama because she is a compulsory heir under the uh, rule on legal succession. Compulsory nga, eh, mandated, eh. Hindi siya pwedeng i-disregard. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, he has, she has a claim now on the estate or property of John. Na iwan ni John. Now, kung meron po siya lang anak, si John and Jane, then therefore, si Jane and John, uh, Jane and the anak will inherit and at the same time as equally uh, divided between the two of them ang property. Okay? Because uh, they are heirs, no? Compulsive heirs of John. Now, how about the papa? Let's say, si papa is buhay pa. Ako, duninuit yun eh. Nauna lang naman tayong anak niya. na predecessor. siya. Sabi niya, how about ako? Ano nangyari? Well, alam po natin ang rule. Kapag nasa ascending line, eh, it will be excluded by the descending line. Hindi po siya kasali. Pag may existence of descending line, which in this case, yung anak ni John and Jane. Right? So, the only way that the papa will inherit, in case lang, that walang as anak si John and Jane. Yan. At buhay pa si Papa. And therefore, merong uh, ownership rights sa estate ni John si Papa. So, hati sila ni John and, uh, ni Jane and the Papa. Okay? Now, suppose wala, wala si Papa. Wala na rin ang mama ni John. Tapos, uh, wala rin silang anak. Pero, merong mga kapatid si John. Ayan. 
At saka another one, yung yan, maldita na yan, si Melissa, eh, mga kapatid di dyan. In that particular case, they are what we call collateral blood relatives. Walang ascending, walang descending, tingin tayo sa collateral. So therefore, si Jane is magmamana together with the uh, uh, brothers and uh, sister because they are collateral blood relatives. Alright? So, that's it, no? I hope you learned something, a thing or two in our discussion today. And, yeah, I will continue to discuss more of this usapang mana. Dan ang daming tanong. Since I created the segment, ang daming tanong. I will try to answer all your questions. So, please bear with me. And I hope to see you soon again next time. Goodbye. Danke. Sukran. Maraming salamat po.